thanks for the, uh, this invitation again. What we talked about last time was a very general introduction into Inchi. Yeah? So uh, how is Inchi set up, um, the different layers you see over there, um, how to read them if necessary, um, about key, whatever is available over here. And now today we would like much more to go into this uh, ecosystem. And I think it was Jonathan who put that, uh, Jonathan Goodman who put this uh, graphics together. And um, it's really, you know, that we're going from inside out now. Um, inside out, I just reordered it a little bit um, by the different working groups. So uh, obviously we have got the central development of the INCHI. That's what, what we talked about more or less last time. Um, and now we're coming up to the extension of the INCHI as such. And there we have got a bunch of working groups um, like stereochemistry, tautomers, and so on. And on the other hand, we've got applications using the INCHI. And on the application side, um, today uh, I would put major focus to the reactions because uh, it's my uh, working area in there. Uh, mixtures um, I'm involved with as well. And of course, <clears throat> Uh, I'm coming up to the organ metallics, and I would like to do that at the end because that may give most of the discussions, I think. Um, just a few remarks about other working groups, uh, how far I can uh, follow up. I have not done uh, that uh, for all of them. Um, extended stereochemistry is really the original idea that has been introduced by MDL, um, I think in the year 2003, plus uh, other uh, stereochemistry areas um, that, for example, special uh, stereochemistry uh, that are not traditionally handled. Um, and the status over here is um, that the, uh, the first attempt to implement that area will be more or less the current status of Biovia Direct, uh, which means um, that you have enhanced stereochemistry, alenes uh, and cumulenes, and atrop uh, isomers. Um, being ex uh, uh, extending the stereochemistry of the INCHI. Um, later uh, areas are just discussed and uh, following up um, in the next two years. Um, extended tautomers, um, Hinek already mentioned a meeting, uh, the INCHI status meeting in April. Uh, there we had a very interesting discussion over here. Um, in general, as an identifier, um, INCHI has to ignore different types of tautomers as much as possible. Yeah, that was our nitro group discussion last time. Yeah, also the nitro group may be represented in the Rexus way with two double bond O's. Um, it's one way to have a unique identification, therefore the identifier. But in some of the areas, it's really conflicting, for example, with our reaction in Qi because some of the compounds are represented uh, identically. Also, there was a tautomerization reaction in between. So we come up from A goes to A. Um, those are rare cases, but it happens. Now with the work that group did, and uh, that was run by uh, Mark Nicklaus uh, at the NIH, they really uh, had two or three PhD uh, uh, students working on that to see, you know, uh, how does the nitro group really look like? What are the percentages of distribution between the different formats? You know, looking into NMR and other kinds of spectra, which was a very interesting work and quite interesting articles coming out of that. But now actually what we decided is to split that up as a special INCHI, the Tortomer INCHI, um, for those uh, areas where you really very, very much depend on uh, the Tortomer identification as a single entity, which is mainly in the databases, yeah. Um, isotopologues, I cannot say anything about. Um, that's some an area I haven't followed up myself. Large molecules started with uh, biomolecules um, and the extension of INCHI to 32,000 uh, atoms uh, around uh, version 104, I think, or 105. Um, and it's continuing now um, looking into HELM and uh, the linkage into that one on the one hand, but into other large molecule areas as well. And you must have in mind that large molecules, even we are, can handle 32,000 atoms with INCHI, a calculation time of two minutes um, may not be really um, affordable uh, for really practical usage. Yeah, so there are a lot of limitations into that area as well. Um, monomer atoms, again, I have to say, I do not know much about. 
Organometallics we're going to discuss later. And last but not least, uh, this group variability and positional isomers. Um, very simple example, think about xylenes. They are normally not divided in, especially not uh, in, uh, separated into uh, the different uh, uh, versions or to meter para. Um, but you have to, um, uh, and especially in industrial chemistry, but we have to, uh, we need a way to identify them in a single way within one identifier. This group uh, is looking into Markus inches again, and um, more or less has started uh, it, its practical work in April. Okay. Uh, on the other side, working groups, um, nanomolecules uh, is a very interesting area, I have to say, um, because um, they do not have anything really to describe the molecules. <laughs> uh, it's a very broad area. Um, and now they try to find a way to use inches uh, to describe those uh, atom molecules uh, that can be uniquely described, but may need mixtures as well and reactions uh, for their uh, work. QR codes is what it just says. Uh, you know, it's just a group uh, using, uh, representing inches as QR code and that you may just do a follow up uh, taking uh, any uh, ident uh, reader, because you QR code reader, then the, you get uh, the entire inch out of that one and can do further work, work with that. And uh, the resolver is a long ongoing project that originally started with the idea of, okay, we have uh, a lot of inchy keys. An inchy key cannot be resolved anymore, but we have to do. Uh, we have to find out what is the original inchy behind that one to do any further work. That was the starting point. And meanwhile, it has become um, because we've got PubMed. You've got 130 million uh, inches over there. Zinc even 700 million. This original idea um, was extended much more into a general protocol. Uh, how to uh, run searches over distributed uh, sources in the internet. Yeah, it's, it's, um, which is available and uh, supported by Markus Setzmann, who is working at Fitzkimi. Okay, uh, and before I go into the details of the others, education and academic training is a group uh, that really focuses itself uh, to, uh, to build up the necessary uh, training material um, for different type of, uh, type of purposes. And last but not least, um, we are moving the entire development over to GitHub. And with that one, uh, we have a small GitHub uh, group thinking about how to do that because there are a lot of practical details uh, how you can make uh, GitHub really work uh, useful for you. This is a very fast overview. And now let me take those three examples, reaction mixtures and organ metallics to go a little bit into details how inches are used. So let's start with the reactions. And yeah, so I hopefully see the overview. It started uh, uh, as well around 2008. Um, I, I joined in roughly about 2014 um, because the prototype was done and they were looking for somebody who was capable to build the productive release. Um, from the commercial side, it was a disaster because the prototype uh, missed quite a number of things that came up to two years of discussion before we were really capable to program. And finally, we released it in March 2017. You find the publication underneath, and um, we are working now on the next release. And I'm just giving a short overview uh, about the release. And now, you know, this is actually um, the only Inchi application that has got an official release up to now, by the way. Um, and what we are planning. Okay, how do we see reactants? Mm, reactants have a, a reactant and a product, and we've got agents in between. And under agents, we understand any solvents, catalyst, and whatever is used to run the reaction and not directly participating into any kind of exchange uh, with, uh, between the reactants and products. Yeah, so a rough description. And the basic idea over here was to say, okay, we have got, for each of the component of the reaction, we assume that we have an inchy. And um, then we need something to order the different inches into uh, in a unique way so that you get this uh, reaction inchy done. And we need a few inchy keys, reaction inchy keys, um, that are useful uh, for especially web searches. 
Yeah, and therefore we have this long reaction in Chiki, short reaction in Chiki, and web reaction in Chiki, and what they mean are just coming immediately. But let me start with the general introduction. Yeah, so nothing about chemistry. It's a very, very simple esterification. It's more school than uh, university. Um, but it's more uh, important to see where the problems are to have a unique representation. Uh, first, uh, all of those uh, three reaction equ uh, equations are consistent and possible. Um, there is no ordering really done. Yeah, so we had to introduce an ordering system where we just said, okay, each of the components are represented by an inchy, and those inchies of one layer. So basically, first layer, second, uh, actually second layer, come back to that immediately, third layer, fourth layer, um, are ordered alphabetically. Yeah, that's why you see that C2, which is the ethanol, comes first before you get the acid over here. And you see the uh, exclamation marks are used as separators within a group, and the less and greater signs are used uh, to differentiate the different groups uh, from each other. Starting group, that's the first one, is the reaction inchi identification itself, first version uh, based on uh, inchi version one standard. And you've got the first one, this is the right order alphabetically. The second one, following over here, in the same way C comes before, uh, starts before H. And the last one uh, with the sulfuric acid. You may have recognized that we have got a D equal at the end. And actually this describes the direction of the reaction. Yeah, uh, a D plus means it goes from A to B, from left to the right. A, a D minus means A is created from B. So it's basically the reverse direction going like that. And D equals means it's an equilibrium. Okay, because equilibrium reactions allow, again, you know, to write it into both directions. You don't know which one is uh, the starting material, which is a product because they're in equilibrium. We have got one additional rule. Um, you take the groups and you order them again uh, alphabetically. So this group always have to start uh, with the lower alphabetically ordered uh, group. And in case you just have to return D plus to D minus in case you had to exchange both. Yeah, that is uh, the last step for ordering. Uh, we need to make it unique. With that one, we have defined a unique representation of a reaction. And from there, we can define those inchy keys. And just to give you a very short overview, the idea of the long reaction inchy key basically means we take the, we keep the order as it is and take the original inchy keys and just order them in the same way you just saw before. So that if in case you have got any inchy key in a search, you can find this reaction as well. So not only the molecule, but the reaction. So this is meant for databases that are extended um, uh, over uh, to, the, um, uh, uh, to the internet, for example, or within other bigger search systems so that you've got an identification via normal standard inchy keys. One more comment, again, SA means standard first version and EUHFF, uh, the UHFF actually, it's not used up to now. Um, it means, you know, it's the hash for nothing that I mentioned uh, last time already, uh, but may contain additional information about the reaction uh, in a later stage uh, that are hashed. And the E uh, is just for equilibrium. Yeah, so this better just that you know um, where uh, the, about the direction. And besides that one, we did a simplification. Uh, the different levels are just separated by a double dash. Part two, disadvantage of that one that can be quite long. So that's not that good for inchi uh, for any kind of indexing. Therefore, you've got this short reaction inchi key that allows you to have one short index for each of the reactions. Again, set up in a different way. We had a long discussion about that, but that what came out of. The last three just represent the stereo uh, parts uh, and uh, isotope information. Those are just uh, uh, the representation of the joint um, structural representation and connectivity table that are hashed again. So you've got the second layer, third layer, and fourth layer. 
Um, and you have seen that one already before with the long uh, reaction in Shiki. Plus this one at the end, because we found out that it was not possible to distinguish between a no structure and a half reaction. No structure means um, you don't know what it is, but you may have to keep it in there as a placeholder and you describe the placeholder, for example, by a text. And the no structure with an inch is just an empty string. Um, the same is true if you've got a half reaction. That means A plus B goes to something and you cannot describe it. That's an empty string as well. So just to distinguish both of them, we had to introduce this additional short um, section. Last but not least, we introduced something new, um, which comes out of the practical experiences use, uh, searching in reactions, because uh, reaction searches are normally dependent on the type of uh, hierarchy you have in terms of what is a uh, starting material, what is the prog product, what is the agent. But now if you talk to two organic chemists, it may be a little bit hard uh, to find an agreement. What is the agent? <laughs> what is the starting material? What is the product? Yeah, so I've got a number of discussions with that one. And the outcome of uh, that is uh, that uh, the, um, uh, the reaction inches as such, like the underlying reactions uh, themselves, um, just have a certain way uh, to represent uh, um, the reactions more or less depending on the data model, model that is underneath. So the idea of the VEC reaction in Shiki is to say, okay, we only take uh, the mentioned um, components and map them together into one key that is basically representing again, all of them now representing uh, this key for the component layer, those ones uh, for, the, um, uh, for uh, uh, the stereochemistry, and isotopes and that kind of stuff. The N just lets you know that it is neutral altogether and the SA that it was a standard first version. The outcome of that one is um, that we let it run, uh, for example, over a database called Spresi with four and a half million reactions and suddenly found out, okay, there are roughly about 200,000 reactions that are different in terms of the reaction in Chiki we saw before that one but are identical in terms of the wet reaction in Chiki. And then going into the details, we found out, okay, those were the equilibrium reactions because within the traditional formats, you can only go from A to B, but A cannot, cannot come from B and the equilibrium reaction is not represented in the traditional formats like RxN files as well. So within the database, you had to, within the equilibrium case, you had to take both into that. The A goes to B and the B goes to A case. But this is normally not recognized. And the web reaction in Chiki is one way to do that. And another example uh, I found out during uh, testing in the US uh, patent office database provided by Roger Sale um, that I found uh, had the same um, occurrence over there. So reactions that are different in terms of their reaction in Chiki, but not in terms of the web reaction in Chiki. And just seeing two or three of them that mainly differed in the definition of the agent, I would say that it's an interesting case for a lawyer. Yeah, so they interesting products suddenly <clears throat> moved out into other areas where they were not recognized anymore and or could not be seen as the original reaction. And I think lawyers may argue about that. Yeah, but this is the idea of this bad reaction in Chiki. Um, and it was likely the best way to start a, a reaction search if you do not know anything about uh, how the, your database is set up, for example, if you run it uh, or via the internet. Yeah, because you get a, you may not you may get more results as expected, but at least you can make sure that uh, you do not lose anything. Okay, um, just a few uh, comments about uh, Okay, it has been used meanwhile, um, especially in uh, the Zavi project where you've got 120 million reactions meanwhile. So it's a broader use over there. And uh, you find it in software packages like the, uh, by UVS Direct, uh, Draw Direct, Pipeline Pilot or in Chemex on Marvin. Uh, and quite interestingly for me, uh, because the nine nodes um, were created by Laza, um, completely independent from any inchi uh, interest because nobody 
uh, was in contact with them before. Okay, um, just very sh shortly, what is next? Um, of course, we have got technical uh, enhancements, blah, blah, blah. Uh, just what I would like to mention, we have to add atom mapping because atom mapping is a way um, to uh, uniquely identify reactions in the worst case. Um, just a reminder, atom mapping means you just uh, determine where to find an atom in the starting material and in the product. And the, those bars over here just uh, identify those bonds that change as well. Um, the way to transfer that one is uh, to say, okay, we use the numbering of the inches that is in blue over here. And then we just need a way uh, to say, okay, this is the starting material. So obviously layer two, we only have one component. This is the one, and this is the first atom that goes over into the third layer, product layer, uh, first component, first atom, and so on. So you get all of those relationships. Um, and because atom mapping is only available up to now for the second and third layer, we skip it so that you can shorten it. And we have a new orcs information, which we call map orcs info, which is just described over here again, versioning, and then you just uh, put concatenate all those strings to one long string. Again, ordering by alphabetical order. The interesting part of that story, um, and you may have more, diffi uh, more difficult uh, cases like uh, the acetylene uh, is not, uh, you cannot say how this is met, whether it's this met around this one or that one or vice versa. And there we had to introduce brackets to have a clear um, uh, identification or vice versa saying this is not clear, those two uh, positions uh, may be taken from uh, the first atom. And last but not least, have in mind that in some of the cases like the co arrangement, only the met, uh, ox info is the way to distinguish that, there has a, that you have a reaction at all, because in that case, the starting material is identical to the uh, product. What you have in between is a rearrangement of the bonds. You can see that one in uh, spectro with spectroscopic data, uh, but not just out of the um, direction itself. So that the, um, uh, or the mapping is just uh, the way to do that, uh, to identify that. So comments about that one, orcs info means uh, they are not part of the identification. The interesting part over here is you do not have to, uh, you do not need any more the information about breaking the bones because the original part uh, is not canonicalized, unlike the our reaction inchi. Each inchi is a canonical representation of the molecule. And that leads to the fact that you have got a canonical representation of the mapping over here as well. And I think that's the first one that does exist at all, um, where you get uh, atom mapping canonicalized. Next step we have to work on is stereochemistry. Background to that one is uh, that the standard inchi always interprets any um, stereo bond as absolutely known. And with that one, we have a problem that we cannot uh, um, use, um, well, that we need additional information, especially if we've got resumes. And the idea to that one is that we said, okay, we have first any kind of unknown bond or racemic bond is just drawn as a single bond. You keep the bond marks of the product. And at the end, you try to define a rule set that is very similar to the ones that are described in the extended um, stereochemistry in an additional layer at the end, um, where we use those kinds of uh, shortcuts. And that leads, um, uh, I take the example. Uh, in that case, uh, you've got an oxidation over here and due to the oxidation, you know that uh, the outcoming uh, bonds over here must be up, up or down, down. But in the very first step, you cannot separate that one. It's a typical case. We have got a pure, but not fully analyzed and therefore unknown um, structure. And what we did over here, um, again, we know this is the product and we just identified uh, within those products, um, the atoms that are related. And we only have to, we only need one uh, of them. So it's in the third layer, product layer. It's only one comp uh, compound uh, component necessary to describe, and it's number 19 and number 21. 
that have the same relationships. So if one of them is up, the other one must be up as well and down, down. And we just represent that one by those brackets. If this is not needed, um, you just skip them and um, you have a way. Now this can be used as a way to have those addi additional uh, information that we miss within the standard inchi right now. Last but not least, we would like to uh, look in a little bit uh, influenced by machine learning that we have to uh, transfer meshing, uh, the reaction data as well. And uh, unlike original uh, starting point, um, which I actually am going to write uh, within the mixture in she, uh, meanwhile, in our discussion, we moved over to a JSON format because uh, JSON reader and writer are more or less available everywhere. And it's very easy um, to use them. And the format starts again, well, uh, now if you think about um, a reaction, um, we have got reaction related data, like pressure, temperature, blah, blah, blah. And nowadays, um, more and more devices are capable uh, to handle, uh, to give you signals about each of, uh, well, actually about the status of a reaction, let's say after 300 seconds, 600 seconds and so on. Yeah. So that you got a continuous data flow. And we call those on time or in depending data um, that are used, for example, in flow chemistry, or I know the uh, deep matter uh, sensor um, that can be taken into a flask um, to get a continuous flow of uh, reaction condition um, data. And on the other hand, you have got components related data, meaning how much did you put in? Um, how uh, was the color? Uh, what, what are the color melting point, blah, blah, blah. And um, at the end, uh, you get your products that can be described as a component uh, related data as well. Again, we've got uh, the input, that part that is static, and we've got the time point uh, part. For example, if you uh, put, uh, in our example, uh, put the catalyst, the sulfuric acid, uh, drop wise into uh, the erection uh, vessel, um, the um, concentration is slowly increased and that may be measured uh, and uh, maybe further evaluated, especially in terms of machine learning. And last but not least, uh, we are still working on uh, the workup, how to do that one. Yeah, and again, you get some formal stuff, proc auxin for 100 is a starting point and it's an auxiliary information because in a lot of cases, they may not be available. Interesting part for machine learning, we decided to have an X um, to say that this reaction failed. Yeah, uh, for machine learning, you have to know what failed and what works out. Failing is as important as uh, running reactions, but then normally they are not captured. And a reaction fails, uh, not the reaction as such, but the conditions failed that were run uh, for that re reaction. That's why we put it over here. And now we come up uh, to a set of formal uh, sections, how to set it up. It's described over here. I'll just be very short over that one. Going more into the examples. Yeah, so if you think about the component data, those are the starting values. Uh, you need uh, um, the concentrations, the type of unit which is underneath. And then this is started with half a liter and this is going into that um, slowly. And thinking about the time point part, well, actually in traditional summary, you just have like this one, this sign over here. That's what you normally find in databases. If you think about time point depending values, you see changes over here. This is a mock-up by the way. Yeah? So we are still developing any further. It's the same for reaction data. Yeah, Normally you just say the reaction was run with 100 uh, degrees at 10 pH of seven, whatever, uh, steering, blah, blah. And again, you may have a time point resolution um, if you go into the details. And last but not least, that would look something like this. This is basically much more thought about being machine readable and the machine transfer so that you can uh, handle that one um, uh, within a, a vectorized environment. Okay. And of course, we are going to open source as well. <laughs>